Thank you, Rihanna. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Bondi Pavilion is one of the nation's jewels, recognised in 2008 by the Australian Government as having exceptional cultural significance. The National Estate Listing identified Bondi as, and I quote, one of Australia's most treasured places and one of the world's most famous beaches where Australians meet nature's challenge in the surf. Bondi Pavilion is a central part of the Bondi experience. However, this stunning cultural and beachside centre faces a precarious future. The Liberal-controlled Waverley Council is pushing ahead with major commercialisation and privatisation plans for the pavilion. Bondi is in the Prime Minister's Wentworth electorate. Through grants and staff connections, Mr Turnbull and his government are involved in what is turning into another unsavoury Sydney story of politicians and developers. The last time a Waverley Liberal Council attempted a similar privatisation plan, they ended up before ICAC with many found to be corrupt. I'm not suggesting that the Waverley Mayor and Turnbull staffer Sally Betts is corrupt. However, what she and Mr Turnbull should be mindful is that with many New South Wales Liberals caught up in the ICAC exposed ex corruption, there is growing public concern about the unhealthily close relationship by senior, senior Waverley Liberals and developers and hotel companies. Ms Betts is a part-time employee of the Prime Minister. I understand that since 2012 she has worked two days a week in his electorate office. A couple of years ago, Ms Betts came close to losing that job when it was revealed that she had written and signed as mayor a glowing reference defending the character of a man found guilty of a horrendously violent rape. Later, Betts admitted that she hardly knew the man. She did know that his family owned two of the busiest hotels in Bondi Junction and also knew that the family were financial supporters of the Liberal Party and beneficiaries of Liberal support in the Council for extended hours of trading for their businesses. If that scandal wasn't enough to give the Prime Minister reason to distance himself from Miss Betts, he should acquaint himself with what she is doing to Bondi Pavilion. Ever since Miss Betts became Mayor almost a decade ago, she and her band of Liberal councillors have systematically mismanaged the pavilion, reducing funding and ignoring the community programs. A couple of years back, Arguing that the pavilion had become run down, Betts spotted the directive from the Baird government to amalgamate with Randwick and with Wallara councils as a cover she needed to push through privatisation of the pavilion once and for all. Using this spurious survey of just 600 people, Betts Liberals voted to abolish the 156-year-old Waverley Council, Sydney's second oldest council after the city of Sydney. The reward for Betts for pulling this off is said to be a promise from, the, from Mr Baird of a seat in the New South Wales Upper House. The Betts management of Bondi Pavilion is typical of what councils and governments do when they are set on a privatisation course that will benefit developers. It starts with neglect. The pavilion has been left to deteriorate in recent years. We have not seen any repairs or basic maintenance for years. Now, locals are wondering if this has been a purposeful strategy to bolster the Liberals' argument that the private sector needs to be brought in. It is not just the building, however, that's been run down. The pavilion is not the vibrant community centre it once was. Under the Liberal rule at Waverley Council, this wonderful asset no longer hosts the great events of past decades, rock against racism, uh, Latin American festivals, International Women's Day, International Women's Day festivals and so much more. The need for an upgrade is apparent to tourists and locals alike. What is wanted, however, is an upgrade that retains the pavilion as a community facility. The course of action pursued by Waverley Council and Mayor Betts reveals their secretive approach. The Council applied for a grant under the Department of Environment protecting National Historic Sites and was successful in obtaining $1 million towards the design phase of the Bondi Pavilion upgrade. But once the grant was received, Mayor Betts pulled down a curtain of secrecy. 
the community have been locked out of having a say. What we do know is once the mayor had the pot of public money under her belt, she commissioned one of Sydney's leading architects who took a few months to come back with a couple of design suggestions. And this is where the story gets really murky. Instead of these design suggestions being presented to a meeting of councillors, a team of council officers plus the mayor rejected two relatively modest plans and decided instead to push ahead with an extravagant proposal with a whopping price tag of $38 million, one with massive flow-on effects on the community activities at the pavilion. The question the local community have the right to know is, has the mayor abided by the law when it comes to advancing her privatisation plans for the pavilion? The $1 million grant awarded under the Protecting National Historic Sites program is for the design and conservation work on Bondo Pavilion. The, guide, the guidelines for these grants clearly state that the money is for the historic heritage values of the site. The grant is the second largest under the scheme. I'm happy to negotiate acknowledge the interjections. The grant is the second largest under the scheme, eating up more than 10 per cent of the program's total on, uh, annual budget. So the then Liberal Environment Minister, Greg Hunt, was very, and maybe surprisingly, generous. For months, the mayor refused to release a grant application to the community. I found out that as a member of parliament, I'm entitled to receive a copy. I have long-term involvement with the pavilion as a user and participant in the 1987 and the current Save Bondi Pavilion campaign. Also, as an MP, I wanted to bring some transparency to the Waverley Council plans. What I came up against added to my concern about the BETS plan for the pavilion. In the second half of July, I commenced corresponding with the Mayor to request a copy of the application for $1 million. After one month of not very polite responses from the Mayor, on the 19th of August, she agreed that I could receive a copy of the application. However, that did not mean I immediately received a copy. The wheels still turned slowly, but what they revealed was even more concerning. The Heritage Grants team of the Environment, Energy and Heritage Department could not give me a copy of the application as Waverley Council had not followed their own FOI processes, which they obviously would be aware of. Interestingly, the Grants team representative, who we dealt with, said that they were aware of our request to, due to a number of communications with Council about it. Over a week later, the application grant document was released. It makes for interesting reading. It is clear why the Mayor did not want this application to be released. The application to the federal government that Order. resulted in a $1 million grant of federal money was for an upgrade of the pavilion that would cost up to $14 million. The plan, and I quote, identified broad community support for the upgrade and the conservation of the pavilion. But the project that Mayor Betts is talking up to the media, discussing with developers and touting at so-called community consultation, is the Liberals' $38 million pavilion redevelopment that would see the demolition of the purpose-built music rooms and studios and the eviction of the theatre and all community activities from the first floor of the pavilion. So what is Mayor Betts up to? The $1 million federal grant is supposed to be an upgrade involving maintenance, restoration and enhancement of the pavilion's community facilities. How did the council's $14 million upgrade plan become a $38 million major redevelopment? Who tapped Mayor Betts on the shoulder and said, we have a plan for you? Why wasn't the massive cost increase publicly disclosed? Who are the developers that Waverley Liberals work closely with? When Waverley Council applied for the federal grant, did Mayor Betts already know that her Liberal Council would back a change from a $14 million to a $38 million project? Has the Mayor obtained this $1 million under false pretenses? In 2014, Mayor Betts said, I am pleased that we have been able to allocate $10 million to refurbish the Bondo Pavilion because it is one of Sydney's most iconic buildings. She went on to say, the pavilion has a legacy our community is truly proud of, so we want to make sure its longevity stretches well into the future and continues to live up to its remarkable history. This raises another question that must be answered. Has Waverley Council corrected the information they supplied to the Department of Environment? 
the community support an upgrade of around 40 million which retains the building as a community and cultural centre. They do not support the $38 million plans that see it converted for heavy commercial purposes. When the plans for $38 million upgrade went on to public display and out for consultation, the community response was overwhelming. Out of 700 res 750 responses, few fewer than six supported the plans. The community are solidly opposed to the current $38 million plan that will see the music studios demolished, music rooms that attract internationally recognised recording artists and is home to the Bondi Youth Program would be gone. The Art and Pottery Studios would be demolished. The much loved theatre on the top floor also demolished and space available for small scale community events reduced by 50%. Acclaimed theatre practitioners have said this plan is seriously thought, thought flawed and unnecessarily expensive and an irresponsible waste of public money. Roderick van Gelder, an internationally recognised light, light, lighting designer and industry leader in the field of safety for the entertainment industry, has criticised the plans for the new theatre as not fit for purpose. Back to the BETS privatisation plan. The grant application states that additional funding will be sought. This is probably the most important question Mayor Betts must answer. Where will the $38 million come from? When a member of the community asked Mayor Betts where she would get additional money from, she said developers would pay for most of the $38 million cost. Earlier this year, the Mayor had also floated the idea of a public-private partnership. The application states an experienced project manager will be employed. This is also required by Waverley Council's own planning documents. Despite many requests from ratepayers, who this is remains a mystery. The application declares it is able to obtain the necessary permits and support for the, from the relevant traditional owners. This is a lie. Aboriginal heritage has not had the support or respect it deserves, and for the Liberal Council to make this claim of traditional owner support for their plan is insulting. The application declares the project complies with all requirements set out in applicable Commonwealth state and local laws. Now, this, this declaration is astounding. The 38 million plan does not comply with the Crown Land Act. There are more questions the Mayor must answer. Into which account was a $1 million grant deposited? Was it deposited into general revenue or was it handled as re required under the Crown Land Act? Let's remember throughout this period and longer, Waverley Council has failed to produce even a budget, let alone a business plan for their Bondi Pavilion plans. The trouble is, Council's analysis ignores the inconvenient fact that the pavilion sits on Crown land that was dedicated in 1938 for the sole purpose of public recreation. And a recent judgment against a local council found that land reserved for public rec recreation must not be developed for a purpose that excludes the public. That was in the case of Friends of King Edward Park, Inc. versus Newcastle City Council. And because Bondo Beach and Park is Crown land, it should be being managed by a trust, but there is none. It appears that Waverley Council has failed to maintain separate accounts for the beach and pavilion as required by the Act. It has also roundly failed to provide the Minister with the regular annual accounts and re re reports required under the Crown Land Act. Council has ignored provisions of the Crown Lands Act by repeatedly leasing out the park and pavilion for massive profit-making events like New Year's Eve parties and using their proceeds to subsidise entirely different council activities in unrelated places. As a result, trust is not a word that anyone could use to describe the relationship between the Mayor, Waverley Council and the community to which they are both answerable and required to serve. At this stage, and despite the best efforts of the non-Liberal councillors to represent community interests, one Liberal and one Liberal has been brave enough to break ranks and oppose the project. Betts Liberals have refused to give an inch. They sit mute at council meetings and refuse to defend or explain their plans. 
Motions allowing independent experts to evaluate the $38 million project against heritage and other criteria have now twice been rejected, with the mayor repeatedly and arrogantly using her casting vote to push the proposal through. Is the local member, Prime Minister Mr Turnbull, aware of what his staff, staffer is doing with the federal grant? Because the local community can't find out. Surely the Prime Minister and all MPs would want to be confident that money, federal money, delivered under the federal grants program is handled correctly. The movement to save Bondi Pavilion is undertaking the work that the Council should do. We are seeing Liberals in control who have no idea of working for public good and are out of the step with their constituency the, and, and are out to help their constituency, the developers, hotels, real estate agents and other corporate interests. Instead of working for the people, Waverley Council has placed financial sustainability at the top of its management objectives so that the million dollar ocean views from the first floor of Bondi Pavilion are on sale to the highest bidder. The BETS privatisation plans for Bondi Pavilion is nothing new. 29, year, 29 years ago, the Liberals who then controlled Waverley Council tried and failed to advance almost the same plan that Mayor BETS seems obsessed with. This was in, in the era of the Markham Liberal rule over Waverley. Their decision to actually lock the community out of the pavilion kicked off an almighty battle. Sometimes I wonder if it might have inspired Michael Caton's Castle movie as he was a Bondi local and one of the campaigners who helped defeat that attempted private takeover. The Markhams had a plan for Bondi Beach that they dubbed Camelot by the Sea. It included 14-storey buildings on the beachfront, international hotels and the gutting of the Bondi Pavilion and lots of other developer-friendly schemes. The Liberals were defeated in 1987 at council elections in a landslide as residents in Bondi Beach and across Waverley organised to protect their neighbourhoods. And the then Waverley Council end up with the dubious honour of being the first case referred to ICAC. Findings of corrupt conduct were made against a number of people associated with the Markhams. One long-term local resident said to me after a recent fiery Waverley Council meeting, if I close my eyes, Mayor Betts sounds like Mayor Caroline Markham, her antics excluding the public from meaningful involvement and abuse of public money to advance her privatisation plans. If Mayor Betts does not drop her privatisation plans, the next council election could be a repeat of the wipeout that the Markhams faced the last time the Liberals controlled Waverley Council. The campaign to save Bondi Pavilion has been hotting up. In recent months, it's been my pleasure to again share the microphone with Michael Caton, as we did in 1987, to ensure we have a mighty win like we did at that time and save the pavilion from the corporate mates of Mayor Betts and the local Liberals. I congratulate the Save Bondi Pavilion group for all their work in informing the community, the CFMEU for placing a green ban on the pavilion until the privatisation plans are dropped, and all the locals and supporters working hard to save this great community asset. What I have found extraordinary is the way that Mayor Betts has used heritage to justify her privatisation plan, and this argument should be laid to rest. An evaluation of the current proposal against the Borough Charter, which is a reference document for all heritage conservation work, demonstrates what a lie is being peddled by Mayor Betts when she says council vision is for Bondi Pavilion to be a beautiful landmark built building, restoring its heritage value by conserving its original architect. Uh, the Borough Charter really puts um, to rest so many of the misinformation that is coming from Mayor Betts. The use of heritage is to disguise a shamefaced commercialisation of this defining Australian public building. And both the Prime Minister and the Heritage Minister should be ashamed that they have been fooled by Mayor Betts' claims. The secrecy and the barefaced lies from Waverley Council about the project are breathtaking. It was approved behind the scenes by officers and the Mayor, and although required by an earlier Council motion, councillors have never formally considered the $38 million proposal. Mayor Betts, now, it, now is the time to come clean with the community.
Release all the documents about your $38 million plan, or better still, drop the folly and work with the commu community on the urgently needed upgrade.